Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos, you got it, product review. Back in 21, I reviewed the Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and it was a heck of a bang for the buck product. Fast forward to today, and the hard to forget brand name is now offering an upgraded version that includes built-in solar charging, USB outputs, multiple 12 volt outputs, a battery state of charge indicator, and what everyone keeps asking for, built-in cold temperature charging protection. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's inside is a 100 amp hour or 1280 watt hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery with a unique build using 68 automotive grade cylindrical cells instead of the typical prismatic cells. They're also using a high quality Texas instrument battery management system. As for size and weight, it's 14 by eight by seven inches approximately and weighs about 28 pounds. The built-in BMS or battery management system is rated at 100 amps or 1280 watts discharge rate with a 50 amp or 640 watt charge rate. That means you can take 100 amps out and put 50 amps in. So one of the tricks the PowerMax has up its sleeve is the fact that it has this removable module that has, check this out, an Anderson power pole input. So that's for solar. This can take up to 100 watt solar panel through Anderson power pole. You can see here you have a pair of USB quick charge ports, a 30 watt power delivery output, a 5521 12 volt barrel plug output, and of course the typical standard cigarette lighter output so you can hook up a refrigerator or any other 12 volt appliances. So this is connected through an Anderson connector on the bottom. There's an Anderson connector on the battery. You literally just put it on, snap it in, and then there's a button right up here to turn it on. There are two lights on this module. One of them will light up if it is charging and the other one will light up if it is discharging. And on the top of the battery right here, you actually have a button you can press and it will light up four individual LEDs letting you know the state of charge of the battery. So that's 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Tell me how many lights you see. There are four lights! Now what about series and parallel ability? Well, the power mass can take up to four batteries in parallel Note there is no support for putting these in series. So you cannot make 24, 36, or 48 volt batteries out of this. You can only do 12 volts. As for the case, it is ABS plastic rated at IP65 water resistant, so it is resistant to typical weather conditions, and is also V0 flame retardant. The battery is actually manufactured by Renogy and passed UL2743 testing for portable power packs. Now you can go ahead and download that UL testing document on the Dock to Prepare website, and it does include photos of the internals of this battery if you wanna see what's inside. As for the protections, the PowerMax offers both hot and cold temp protection, so this battery will not charge below freezing and self-destruct. That's a very exciting feature for those living in cold climates, and we're gonna be testing that out in a bit. Now, as for features, it does come with a large nylon carrying strap and battery mounting hardware. And of course, the typical user manual. Battery mounting hardware is actually a couple of steel plates that allows you to mount the battery down to a hard surface that doesn't move. They include all the nuts and bolts and screws, and they also include brass hardware for the connectors. Now these batteries are also considered stackable because they have these recessed terminals. So if you pile battery on top of battery, you can still put your cable in here without any problem. Now here's the mind blowing part. You may want to sit down. Dr. Prepare offers a mind blowing class leading 10 year warranty on this product. And of course I took the Dr. Prepare Power Max into my secret laboratory here where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, let's say it now, a single-fisted battery capacity test.
As for the results of the battery capacity test, it scored exactly 100 amp hours on my typical discharge test. Now that was at a 0.2C discharge rate, which is what you're supposed to measure these batteries at. Now I did attempt to do a second discharge rate through the 5521 port that's built into the power max here. So this actually has hidden behind it USB ports, Anderson connectors, and a cigarette letter output. So I did a second test to find out how much power do I get out of here compared to getting out of the terminals. And the results, as you can see, were exactly the same, 100 amp hours. So there is no additional loss using the PowerMax module. The first test is going to be the discharge test. The Dr. Prepare battery has a 100 amp BMS for discharging and 50 amps for charging. So we're gonna go ahead and test and see how much past the 100 amps can you pull from this battery to run appliances or an inverter. In this case, I have a 3000 watt pure sign inverter here from Sun Gold Power, which is more than powerful enough to max this battery out. So let's go ahead and fire this up. We got the amp meter here, of my Victron shunt, and we'll go ahead and see how much power can we pull. Hey, fire it up! Okay, there's our 100 amps, which is being pulled from this battery. Now that's the limit on the BMS. How much further can we push it? Okay, there's 112 amps. And it shut down. Notice the power went out. So what does it mean when the power goes off on the shunt? That means the BMS completely shut the battery down. So right now there is no voltage coming out of this battery. That means I have to jumpstart it to get it to come back on so I can use the inverter. So you're probably wondering how am I gonna jumpstart the battery back to life? Well, I have this really cheap charger and I have it set to 14.8 volts DC and I have a negative and positive lead here and I just basically can touch the battery. This is outputting 14 volts. Watch this will come back on. All I had to do was touch it for a split second to turn the battery back on. And now it's reading 13.05 volts. So this battery is just charged about 50% of the way. Put it back on amps and try again. Okay, we're gonna repeat these results to make sure they are accurate. Okay, there's 100 amps, 112 amps, and it shut down. So there are the results of the discharge test. The doctor repair battery Right after 100 amps, you get to 110, 112, it just cuts you off. Just be aware if you're gonna buy this battery and hook it up to an inverter and you pull the exceeded 110 amps from it, it's going to turn off and you're gonna to have to either jump start it manually or if you have a lithium charger or lithium solar controller, it will automatically jump the battery for you. It should be pretty much invisible. You won't even notice it's happening. Now, because the 100 amp hour doctor repair does have a very sensitive 100 amp BMS, I need to check it and make sure it'll run 100 amps for at least five minutes. In fact, I might even run this for 10 minutes just to be safe. So I have a load on here that's almost exactly 100 amps. I'm gonna let this run for 10 minutes and make sure that the battery doesn't overheat, the BMS doesn't have a problem with 100 amps because if it doesn't pull at least 100 amps, that could be problematic in a lot of situations. And plus you wanna get what you pay for. And there it is, 100 amps. Let's let it run for 10 minutes. And here we are, 10 minute mark. It is still cruising along at 100 amps, no problem. All right, this next test is going to be the charging test. Now this has a 50 amp charging ability. Can we exceed it or not? From what I've seen so far, it's probably very unlikely. So let's go ahead and start charging it. We'll start at 40 amps, work our way up past the 50 amp mark and see what happens. I'm using the Sun Gold Power inverter charger. This has an 80 amp charger in it. So I got a little adjustment knob that I can turn up and it will increase the amount of charging. So there we are at 50 amps and it dies. So I turned it back down, 46, 49, 50. And then as soon as we hit 50, it dumps. Hey, there we are. 49 and a half, just touching 50, and it's not shutting down. So that is our limit. It is exactly 50 amps. Okay, so let's run this at 49 amps and change to make sure that it will actually go for five minutes. So let's let it go for five minutes and see if it can hang. Okay, there you have it. It has run 
more than five minutes at 49 and a half amps charging. Next, we're gonna test the inputs and outputs on the battery because unlike other batteries, the Dr. Prepare actually has a module you can click in and it will allow you to input and output to the battery directly. So the Dr. Prepare battery without the module it's just a regular 12 volt battery, but it has an Anderson connector right here. And this module has an Anderson connector on the bottom. You literally just drop it in, snap it into place. There's a button on the top, you hit turn it on. And now it outputs USB, three different USB ports. You can charge it with solar through an Anderson port. And it has two outputs from the battery. It has a 12 volt cigarette lighter and a 5521 barrel plug. So what we're gonna test is the solar charging port on this. And according to the fantastic user manual it comes with, it says the input voltage is 11 volts to 25 volts supports 100 watt solar panel charging. So let's test that first. Now I have my variable voltage charger here. And then we can see right here how much power is actually going into the battery. So we can check and see is it actually up to 100 watts? Okay, so 13 volts are going in at four amps or 50 watts. Now note that this battery is no more than 50% charged, it's somewhere between 40 and 50%. So it's gonna accept whatever we could throw at it. Let's go ahead and crank up the voltage and see, does it take more? Okay, there we are at 24 and a half volts, exactly 100 watts, check that out. So let's try to exceed 25 volts and see what happens. 29.3 volts, 122 watts. So you can push it a little. 31 volts, 128 watts, 130 watts. How far is it gonna let me push it? There we go, finally at 33 it copped out. Even though they say the voltage limit is 25, it let me take it up to 33. I would safely say 30 volts is as high as you wanna go on this. It did let me input over 120 watts in that overclock state. At 25 volts, it was exactly 100 watts and that's what it's rated for, so I can't recommend you go beyond that, but here on Hobotech, we gotta push the limits to see what these products can do. Now the Dr. Preparer has three USB ports on it. All of them are output only, you have one USB-C port good for 30 watts and a pair of quick charge ports good for 18 watts. So here I have a power bend power bank. Now you might be able to see at the very top there, right above my finger, it says 28 watts. So it does in fact output 30 watts USB power delivery. There's always a couple watts loss. So it's not pulling anymore. It's actually a 30 watt port. You probably want to know, does this do pass through charging? Can you charge it while you use it? Now, this is an unusual case because most batteries don't have ports on them. So here we have the battery charging at 57 watts from my power supply, and the power band is also charging at 28 watts. So you can see power coming in from the solar, power going out through the USB. This does in fact have pass-through charging. Now, what about these ports? These are 12 volt ports. Well, I'm not gonna bother testing those because you saw them in the time lapse. There is an interesting note. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off the charging. You can see it drops to 13.18, turn the charging back on, and it's back up to 13.3. Of course, the reasoning for this is that the module is not regulated. So it does not take the voltage from the battery and change it to anything else. It's literally just using the battery voltage. So there's a good and bad for this. Good is that it's not gonna waste any power converting it from one voltage to another. So you're gonna get the full 100 amp hours capacity from this battery and I tested that. So you can see in the time lapse, you get 100 amp hours through the cigarette lighter port. So. You're not losing anything at all by using the cigarette lighter port or the 5521 output on this because they're both unregulated. The downside to this is gonna be that it's not regulated and once the battery voltage gets down to the last percent of the battery, that voltage is gonna drop below 12 volts. Now, this isn't really a big deal because even if you're running a 12 volt fridge out of that cigarette lighter port and the voltage drops to 11 volts, the refrigerator is still gonna run. All the modern 12 volt compressor fridges usually handle down to 10 and a half to 11 volts. There's usually three settings for a battery on the 12 volt fridges, high, medium, or low. Go in, set it on low, and that will allow this battery to run pretty much down to zero. This is gonna be a non-issue for those of you using this for like overlanding or camping or whatever. The good news is that you can charge this with solar while you run the fridge. So it accepts up to 100 watts of solar through the Anderson, and many solar panels support the Anderson. If your solar panel doesn't have an Anderson output, you can get an adapter off of hobotech.tv slash Amazon, 
go down to solar adapters, there's gonna be a MC4 to Anderson adapter there that you can use. You use virtually any 100 or 120 watt solar panel, plug it into this and charge the battery while you use it to run a fridge or another 12 volt appliance. Okay, we have the Dr. Prepare sitting in this ice co refrigerator overnight at 28 degrees. Okay, the case is 32 degrees. Looks like it's probably gonna start warming up quickly, but the inside should be nice and cold. Let's go test it. Okay, I have a 10 amp charger here. Here's the moment of truth. Will it or will it not charge below freezing? It does not charge below freezing. There you have it. I think that's the first time ever on this channel I tested cold temperature protection and it actually worked. So yes, this battery is completely safe to have in cold weather. So what do I think about the Dr. Prepare Power Max? Well, there are a lot of 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries out there on the market in the sub $400 range, but none of them offer a 10 year warranty. None of them offer a 100 watt solar charge built in or USB ports, or power delivery ports, and multiple 12 volt hookups. Let's not gloss over the fact this battery is manufactured by Renogy, one of the biggest names in the industry. The Texas Instruments BMS built-in is apparently top-notch and quite restrictive when it comes to input and output amps. This combined with the UL listing will please the safety conscious. You also get that really cool button that you can press and get an instant state of charge of the battery. Let's not forget the built-in cold temperature protection that actually works. It's simply amazing you can get all these features at this level of quality and safety in a sub $400 battery. The only real bummer is that this is the only size you can get. They don't sell a two, three, or 400 watt hour version of this, and I really wish they would. Now you may be asking, what's the use case here? How many people are really gonna need this little module thing? Well, the little module thing, the PowerMax module, is actually a separate purchase if you want it to be. You can actually get the raw lithium iron phosphate battery without the PowerMax add-on, for less money. But of course, if you get it in a bundle deal, you're gonna save a few bucks, and of course, you can use my code to get a discount. So the typical use case for this, besides just being a regular lithium battery that you could drop into your RV or wherever else you wanna use it in some kind of off-grid solar build, the case for the PowerMax itself would be to run a 12-volt fridge while camping or traveling, to use during power outages, to charge mobile devices. It would also make for an excellent CPAP battery that would last for at least three nights, if not longer, depending on the settings of your CPAP machine. That's of course if you have a 12 volt adapter for it. Basically you can use it for anything you'd use a solar generator for if it was missing its inverter. Of course you can easily add a small 1000 watt inverter to this to run small appliances like a tiny little three cup coffee machine, a hot plate, instant pot, or anything else that would run under 1200 watts. Those 1200 watts is the output limit for one of these batteries. Also note these are not designed as starter batteries for any kind of vehicle. So don't want to drop this into your car, truck, van, RV, or your dune buggy, or side-by-side, -side or anything else, and use it to start engines. It's not designed for that. The BMS is very restricted, and that's for safety reasons. Because the BMS is so sensitive and limited to a 100 amp discharge rate, the recommended inverter size for this battery is 1,000 watts. You should be able to start a small window air conditioner and most smaller Energy Star residential refrigerators with a thousand watt inverter. Now, if you would just get two of these batteries, put them in parallel, that bumps the output power to 2,500 plus watts. In that case, I'd suggest a 2,000 watt inverter. Now you can wire up to four in parallel, and that would net you 5,000 watts of power, which is enough to run just about anything that uses 120 volts. Now I do have several recommended inverter models on my website, hobotech.tv, and just click on inverters. Product price. The retail price of the Dr. Prepare Power Max is a very reasonable $399, but of course I swung a deal for viewers of this channel, and for a limited time you can get the Power Max, and that's the battery plus the module, for only $369 using the promo code listed in the bottom of this video in the description. Now if you're interested in the Dr. Prepare Power Max battery, a link and discount code is gonna be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually, or you can scan this QR code over here on any mobile device, and it'll take you on over to the Dock to Prepare store page where you can check out the PowerMax battery. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now, till next time. Oh,
commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Now, I know many of you might have been disappointed that I did not tear this battery apart and destroy it during this video to show you the insides. But I have a friend of mine who lost everything in a van fire. I'm going to give him this because I believe that with all the extra connections on it, it's gonna be perfect for his van build. I'm also gonna give him one of my 12 volt refrigerators. I got plenty of them. However, I wanna ask you guys your honest opinion. Should I start tearing these batteries apart on my channel? If it's something that's important to you and it is a buying decision that you want me to cut these batteries apart, destroy them, and basically throw them away afterwards, I will start doing that in 2023, but I'm gonna leave it up to you. So you have to vote in the comments of this video. Yes, should I start tearing these batteries apart to show you what's inside or no, should I continue to not show the inside and donate or sell at a great discount batteries to people that need them? I've gotten rid of at least four or five batteries, at least four or five refrigerators this year alone to people that really need them. So that's one of the reasons why I don't want to destroy, especially the really expensive batteries. I got ones that are a thousand and fifteen hundred bucks. I just don't feel right tearing them apart and then throwing them in the trash because I can't have lithium iron phosphate cells just laying around in boxes because if they bump and short out you have a fire i don't have the storage space just to have racks and racks and racks of just cells that i'll never use they're all different sizes they're different brands they're different grades you can't mix grade a and grade b you can't mix a 210 and a 300 they're pretty much useless once you bust the case apart because they're no longer waterproof or weatherproof. The contents could fall out, cause a fire, stuff can fall in there. I just don't risk it. If I take the top off the battery, it goes in the trash. But I will start tearing them apart on this channel if that's important to you. I'm also going to do a poll on my Facebook group, The Hobo Tech Crew, where you can vote yay or nay on future teardowns for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Let me know in the comments below if I should start tearing them apart or if you're fine with me not tearing them apart. RV Golf Guy, Von Rob, Brian Lieber, John Stacey, Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenhower.